Let's talk about the connection between hormones and how you store body fat. In particular, we're gonna talk about stomach fat, otherwise known as stubborn body fat. A lot of people talk about how even when they drop excessive amounts of body weight, they reduce their body fat percentage dramatically, they still tend to hold that stubborn fat in the midsection. And it could be frustrating. And many what they try to do is they try to diet their way down so they reduce calories and it's always to no avail because you're not addressing the issue. You're not addressing the issue of why are you storing fat there in the first place? Because it's always predicated on your hormonal profile. If you have a lot of pectoral fat as a man, you have high conversion of testosterone to estrogen. If you have excessive stomach fat, you have adrenaline resistance, excess cortisol, and estrogen dominance. Estrogen is also one of the factors for increased stomach fat, in particular in men. So we need to address those things. You can't just reduce calories and hope for the best. You want to look at why things are happening and how to address it. So let's talk about adrenaline resistance. Adrenaline is one of the most important hormones that we produce. It's the ultimate motivation hormones, which gets you out of bed in the morning, which gets you to take on challenges, to crush through barriers, take on risks to thrive. So trying to reduce adrenaline is not necessarily the goal. The goal is to improve adrenaline sensitivity so that you only need to produce a small amount to get the job done. Because what happens is when your body thinks you're stressed, or rather when your mind thinks you're stressed, it's going to produce excessive levels of adrenaline, which is gonna cause excessive storage of calories in your midsection. Why there? Because it's easy to access. So if you need energy for an emergency, it's right there. Now, some of you have so much energy there, you could get through an emergency for the next 10 years. So what's going on here is the signaling is not correct. Your, your brain can't see what your body looks like in the mirror. It's only gonna go based on the signals it's getting. So if it feels that you're under a lot of stress, it's gonna say every time we eat, we better allocate a lot of energy to stubborn body fat so that we can access that in the next emergency. So one of the reasons why, or I mean, it's really the only reason why you have adrenaline resistance is because you have high levels of stress. Maybe you have personal life stress, you're going through a divorce or there's death of a loved one, or you have financial stress, especially with the pandemic, a lot of people lost their jobs or wondering how they're gonna make it each month. Those are serious stressors. And then you also have stress from your diet. So you could be, someone that has a great personal life and you like what you do for a living, but you're still under a lot of stress because your diet is horrible. Way too much processed food, way too much sugar, way too much inflammation as a result of the poor food choices you're making. Now that one's obvious. We all know that you need to eat healthy to be healthy. So I'm not gonna get into what healthy eating looks like. There's a myriad of different approaches to that. But back to reducing stomach fat, you have to get this stress under control. And the goal is not necessarily to reduce stress, it's to manage it better, manage it more effectively. Because anytime you're trying to improve something in your life, whether it's a training goal or a business goal or a personal life goal, there's a level of stress that comes with that. It's not always a bad thing. Stress is absolutely necessary for us to reach our full potential. So the goal is not to reduce stress so much where, okay, I'm just gonna sleep 10 hours a night and I'm gonna just sit down and relax as much as possible and I'm not gonna worry about anything. That, that's ridiculous. That's, you're not gonna live life fully like that. The key is to get yourself into a thriving state where you can blast through all of these things. Your stress management abilities are at a high level. That's something that's worth pursuing and that's something that an optimal hormone profile supports. So the same things that work for improving leptin sensitivity, insulin sensitivity, those are gonna help with adrenaline sensitivity. Longer stretches between meals, let your body snack on stored body fat in between each meals instead of eating several times a day where you don't go to stored body fat because you're always relying on the energy that's coming in. Your body doesn't wanna get rid of that stomach fat. That's one of the ways we survived as a species is we were able to store fat so that when we didn't have access to food, we could live off of that. So you're programmed to store energy for an emergency, whether there's an emergency or not. So you have to work within that frame for the solution. I'm gonna make a dramatic pause here. All right. 
Other things that help with adrenaline production is meditation helps a great deal. I like to just go for long walks. I'm not someone who can just sit in the lotus position and, and go um, even though I've got Indian ancestry, that doesn't come easily to me. I'm a little bit too much of an adrenaline type person. But I go for a long walk with my dogs every day. That to me is meditation. It feels great. It's a beautiful walk around here. The weather's nice. I see the sunset every, every evening. It's incredible. I look forward to it all the time. It's amazing. I get a massage once a week. I always said I would, get, I would get a massage once a week when I could afford it. This is when I was in college because I read about the benefits. I go, man, that sounds incredible. Can't afford it right now, but if and when I can, I'm going to definitely do that. And I started doing that in 2014. I go to a really good lady here in Vegas, and I haven't stopped going since 2014. I've been going for, what, six, coming on seven years now. Most of the never more than two weeks without a massage, and most of the time once a week, especially if I'm in a hard training cycle because the massages – it relaxes your body and mind when you're working with a good practitioner. And what also what happens is at the end of a training week, I've accumulated a certain amount of damage, a certain amount of micro tears and inflammation. Now, if I get a massage that week, I'm going to mitigate that inflammation so that it's not accumulating every week. You see where I'm going? If I'm just training and I'm not doing anything for restoration, I'm just working on half the equation. The other half of the equation is recovery, restoration. Massage is extremely effective. It's completely underrated. I'm always amazed how many fitness professionals don't get massages. I know some who've never got a massage or maybe a couple times a year. You don't know what the fuck you're missing out on. You're out of your goddamn mind. You should be getting a massage every week if you can. If not every week, every two weeks, and at least once a month, for Christ's sake. Just stop fucking going to Starbucks every goddamn day. Get rid of your cable bill watching all this shitty-ass television and do something that's actually productive for yourself. Tai Chi, Qi Gong, these are all great things for just calming the mind, relaxing. Making sure your sleep is on point is crucial. That it comes as a result of being relaxed. Otherwise, you're not going to sleep at night. So other things that will reduce this excessive adrenaline production, magnesium. Christian Thibodeau talked about this when he was on my show, best strength coach out there. Take magnesium after you work out, let's say 300 to 500 milligrams. Take another dosage before you go to bed. And it's going to help reduce that adrenaline after you work out so you go right into a recovery phase. And then it's going to help you sleep at night so that you further recover. So when people talk about there's no such thing as overtraining, yeah, there is, motherfucker. I, I can't stand when people put out this stupid information. There's no such thing as overtraining. I've never missed a workout. Well, you're dumb as fuck, all right? Because you should miss a few workouts. You'd be a lot stronger and you'd be a lot healthier. I mean, if you can't take a week off from training, you got some problems. You have an addiction. You don't have something that's beneficial to your lifestyle. You got a fucking addiction. You can't take a week, one week, your body's wrecked. You're not getting stronger. You're feeling weak. You're tired. And you're, you're, you think the go-to move is to just take more energy drinks and caffeine, which further that adrenaline resistance, and then try to keep working out. No, you're going to crash and you're going to crash really hard. So we got to be smart about stuff. Avoid training to failure. Avoid, leave a few reps in the bank. You're going to make, make much better progress. You're going to be able to sustain that progress over time as well. Now, let's talk about estrogen real quick. Now, here's, here's something for women. Okay, when women hit menopause, what happens is you're not producing estradiol as much anymore. That's the primary estrogen. Now, you're relying more on an adrenal estrogen called estrone. Now, the problem with estrone is, is that it takes fat from areas that most women like to have and most men like to see it on women, and that's from the hips. And it takes it, the hips and glutes, and then it accumulates it in the stomach. So you lose your ass, you lose your hips, and now you have excess stomach fat. Notice I said ass, not booty, because booty is not a word that any man should ever say. Don't ever fucking say booty. Hey, girls, work on your booty. What the fuck is wrong with you? Are you out of your goddamn mind? <laughs> uh, one more dramatic pause. Uh, it's really just for me to figure out what I'm going to say next. I remember I used to teach seminars and sometimes I'd go completely blank and I would just point to someone and say, hey, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, left and right, right, right. Let me get back on it. All right, so with estrogen, if you, in men, if you're converting way too much testosterone to estrogen, you're gonna have excess pec fat and you're also gonna have excess stomach fat. You notice that when you get testosterone and estrogen into an optimal range, physique composition improves a great deal just from that. So that's always focus on the hormonal reasons for why you have body fat. That's why some people, they don't store stomach fat at all because they don't have adrenaline resistance. Even if they have high stress, they're just, why, they're just, not, they're just not built to store excess, excessive energy in the midsection or, stump, or stubborn areas. That's just their genetic card. Now me, 
it doesn't work that way. I eat a really clean diet, but if my stress is not on point, I'll definitely see it in my physique. My stress is really low right now. My personal life's awesome. My professional life's fantastic. My training is going really well. I love what I do for a living. You know, these are all important things. And that's the final thing too is, don't talk to me about having an optimal hormone profile and you work for someone else and you hate your job. Now, I'm not saying that everyone should be an entrepreneur, but if you are, if you are wired to be an entrepreneur, then it's the only thing that you should be doing. You, should, you can never work for someone else. When you have this notion in your mind, I'm never gonna work for someone else. That means you've gotta be an entrepreneur. Someone like me, I don't like having to ask other people for shit, of permission. You work at a job, oh hey, can I take a week off? No, I'm not gonna ask another motherfucker if I can take time off. I take time off anytime I want. I'm a king in this chess game, I'm not a pawn. So are you a pawn or are you a fucking king? I'm a king in this chess game. I don't play checkers, I play chess and I'm a king. I'm not a fucking pawn or a rook or anyone else that's expendable. So for me, I have to work for myself. Now that's me, it's not good or bad, it's just who I am. Someone else, they may say, man, I don't wanna run my own business, that looks stressful and I don't know what I'm gonna make each month and I gotta, be, I gotta take responsibility for every fucking thing that happens. I don't need that shit. I'd rather just go to my job, go home, forget about it and that's fine, you know, that's who you are. If you're in that category, you're not going to be stressed about whatever job you have. But if you hate what you do for a living and you think you can be healthy trying to do things outside of it, you're going to lose. It's not going to happen. It's going to be to no avail. You're going to keep having this life of quiet desperation and you're never going to get to where you want to go.